Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Matthew chapter number six, and uh, we're going to be looking at another phrase this morning to uh, the Lord's Prayer. Um, <clears throat> uh, I was just reflecting back a few days ago, just a few days ago, when um, my wife and I had a little bit of a disagreement. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm a garbage disposal kind of guy. If it'll go down in that hole, I'm going to put it down in there. And we had, we, we cleaned out the refrigerator or something, I don't remember now. But I, I do remember, she told me, she said, Mike, don't put that down in there now. That will not work down in there. I said, yeah, yeah, just, you know, I know better than she does about that stuff. And so I, I went ahead and, and against major objections. I, I, I went ahead and, I mean, it was food for crying out loud. She said, it won't work in there. I said, yeah, it will. Don't, don't put that. If you do that, it's going to stop it up. I said, it's not going to stop it. Look at that. I, so I put it on down in there and finished up. And, and a little while later, she says, I told you so. And she had it in her hand. See, see, it will not work in there. I had to get down, put my hand down in there and get that out of there. You stopped it up like I told you you were going to do. Now, it got stopped up not because of some external issues. The electricity was still working. Uh, the motor was fine. It got stopped up because I put something down in there that was not supposed to go down in there. I was warned. Don't put that down in there. You're going to mess it up. It won't work if you do. I did it anyway. And, and, and really, uh, I think that's what this passage today uh, is all about. When our lives uh, get stopped up, when forward progress is hindered, it's usually not because of a lot of external stuff. Uh, and we, we want to blame it on a lot of other stuff. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we get hindered in our forward progress in our life because of what we let get in here. And it clogs us up and messes us up. Almost never is it external. Now the problem with... Uh, most of us, when our progress gets stopped up, we've got a lot of unconfessed sin in our life. We have a lot of guilt that arises as a result of the sin that we allow down inside uh, of our life. And uh, it's almost never external. We blame it on relationships. We bring, blame it on a lot of other stuff, but mainly we get stopped in our spiritual walk with God because of what we allow to go down inside. Um, you, you, you're just, you got to understand something. God did not wire you up to walk around and carry around guilt and unconfessed sin and undealt with issues in your life. You're not wired by God for that. And it's no wonder then when we sin, when we uh, don't stay clean before God, that our progress is hindered greatly. No wonder the writer of Hebrews said, let us throw off everything that hinders us and the sin that so easily entangles us and let us run with perseverance the race that God has set before us. Let, let, me, let me help you with something here. God has set a race before you that only you can run. By the way, it's not the race that your mom and daddy set before you. It's not a race that your siblings 
set for you. It, it, it's not the race that some other person uh, has earmarked for your life. God has earmarked that life for you. Every one of us in this room have a race that God has determined that we are to uh, run in. And most people don't run in that race because they get tangled up, they get clogged up. Their forward progress stops up and they are hindered in it by living plan B lives instead of the life that God has in store for you. Are you tracking with me so far? Uh, by the way, before I go too much further, uh, all of us in this room are faulty. So you have to understand that none of us are perfect. We don't measure up to the standards that we set for our own lives, much less the standards that God has set before us. We all make mistakes somewhere along the way. We all live with regrets in our life over things that we did or didn't do, uh, that we should have done or didn't do. And every one of us at some point in time in our life we do walk around with a lot of guilt and a lot of shame. And like my disposal, we wind up not making much progress in our lives. Um, when that happens, when we get spiritually clogged up, we go about trying to fix it in ways that really don't work. Every one of us in this room we, we want to rationalize why we do what we do or why we didn't do what we should have done. And about that time, our heart and our head get in a war together. Our heart tells us what we uh, should do to fix the situation, but our head tries to rationalize it uh, away by saying uh, things like, uh, it, it's, it's really okay, uh, it's really not such a bad thing. Uh, it, we, we, we really uh, uh, have all kinds of excuses and rationalizations as to why we are living the life that we are living and dealing with the emotions that we are dealing with. And our head tells us one thing, our heart tells us another. Our health tell, uh, head tells us one thing and our whole being tells us that's not right. And so we get in this major battle of guilt. And by the way, can I just tell you today that God does not want you carrying around that very destructive emotion and behavior in your life. But here's what we do. We, we go around thinking in our life uh, and scared and afraid that somebody is going to find out about the real us. And if they find out who I really am, and if they find out what I have really done, if they find out that I am not what they perceive me to be, then they're not going to like me and they're not going to love me. And so I'm going to protect that. I'm going to live with that. I'm going to deal with that in some fashion. Let me just help you with something. God already knows you. You've already been found out. It just hadn't been revealed yet. The word says, be sure your sins will um, find you out. Now, I'm still in the introduction. I still haven't got to the text yet, so y'all just hang in here with me. Um, how many of you have some judgmental people around you? How many of you have people that are just extremely judgmental? They're still your friend. They're still in your family. They're still in a relationship. But, uh, boy, they find it very easy to start pointing out things in your life. I got them. You better believe the preacher's going to have them, I promise you. <laughs> but I've got friends that are like that. They're just uh, extremely... Uh, judgmental and the reason that they're judgmental is because uh, they see things in other people and by the way they're unforgiving people and they see things in other people's lives that they see in their own life and so as a method of deflection they want to point it out in somebody else's life to keep the spotlight from coming in on themselves so they are unforgiving people because they've never been forgiven themselves. Uh, and they hang with, with that. I, I, by the way, can I just say guilt 
and shame and regret. And all of that stuff will make you physically sick. I read one of the most interesting articles the other day that 60 to 70% of the people in the hospital could get up and go home healed if they would just ever learn how to deal with the guilt and shame of their life. 60 to 70% of the people that are there. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. If one covers their sin, he will not prosper. But if you confess and forsake your sin, you will find mercy. Now we're in Matthew 6. And we've looked at phrase by phrase of the Lord's Prayer. And this morning, I'll just tell you, I believe it's one of the most exciting sections of Scripture in all of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, I, I believe with all of my heart, church, and those of you that are tuning in by whatever means electronically today, uh, I, I believe it could be one of the most life-changing days that you've ever had in your life. And the reason that I know that is because when I've had days like today, it's been life-changing for me. And I can tell you not only from Scripture, I can tell you from experience that if you'll listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit of God today as He deals with you about this text, it will revolutionize your life. It will change you and you will experience a freedom like you have never experienced before. I'll never forget the first time as a believer, and by the way, I was pastoring a church uh, at the time, my very first church. I was sitting there uh, this morning before I, I came up, um, just reflecting back on that first church for a few minutes. And, and I remember it just as vividly. I could show you where I was um, on, on that, in that house on Gaston Drive. And uh, God began to deal with me. I just kind of laid myself bare before the Lord, and I said, Lord, I, you know, I, I don't want to have anything to come between me and you. And God, if there is something that is hindering me from being the man that you want me to be, if there's something hindering me uh, from being clean before you, if there is something in my life today uh, that I am not aware of, I want you to reveal it to me. I want you to show, by the way, can I just tell you, when you ask God to do that, you better be prepared because he's fixing to do it. God showed me a sin that I had committed over 10 years prior to that day that I had let go and had not dealt with. And I had rationalized that in my mind I had rationalized it in my heart and I had just shoved it down and I had blamed it on the other person. Well, he did this to me and he used me and he did me wrong and he didn't treat me right and so I don't owe him anything. And I, I, I just really rationalized that thing and explained it away in my own heart and mind. And the Holy Ghost said to me, doesn't matter what he did. Still doesn't give you the right to do what you did. And when I dealt with that and admitted it and came clean before God with it, God blessed me to enable me to be able to be a blessing to others. God wants to do the same thing uh, in your own heart and in your own life. The scripture begins, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I'm in verse 9, now verse 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now watch this next phrase. And forgive us, our, depending on translation that you have, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts or our trespasses. Um, I realized that if I was going to be a blessing to other people, 
Uh, if God was going to bless me, I really couldn't have anything unconfessed, undealt with. I couldn't carry around guilt and shame in my life, and it had to be eradicated out of my life. Today, I want to help you with that. I have uh, six things that I want to give you, and, and I hope that you have a pen and a paper. I hope that you'll write this down, because I, I want you to, either right now in your seat, but especially sometime today when you get home, uh, I want you to find a very secluded, quiet, uninterrupted spot. And I want you to just get before God with a blank piece of paper and a pencil. And I want you to sit there and I want you to Go before God, and I want you to say to God, God, here I am. And I want you to show me anything that I have put in the disposal of that has clogged up the progress of my life and that is hindering me from being the man or the woman that you'd have me to be. I want you to stay there as long as you have to stay there. By the way, when you, uh, when you get before God like that, he will show you. He will make it clear. He will make it plain. He will make it unmistakable. Now, the, the first thing is this. You ready? And they all begin with an A, so it'll kind of help you as we go along. The first one is assess every area of your life. Assess every area of your life. So the word says in Lamentations 3, let us test and examine our way. And just go before God and God, I want you to reveal my sin to me. I want you to clear my mind. I want you to deal uh, with my heart. I don't want anything to hinder me from in that race that you have set before me so that I can continue to run that race, the plan A of my life. Psalm 139 verse 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the way of everlasting life. Psalm 139 Verse 23 and 24. Now, when you get into that place of isolation, when you get into that place of uninterrupted quiet time, don't get in a hurry. Don't rush through it. The next thing, I want you to write it down. I, I want you to make sure, uh, that, by, by the way, if you don't write it down, then you will not have thought about it. You won't deal with it in a proper manner. So write it down and be very specific about it, And the way to get specific is to make sure it just doesn't register here that you put it down on a piece of paper. Uh, the Word of God says that if we judge ourselves, then ju God won't have to judge us. And, and that's what, kind of what you're doing. So the question is, how serious are you about God blessing your life? How serious are you uh, that uh, you are willing to be honest uh, with yourself? How serious are you about being honest with other people or do you want to continue to live your life in denial and have that clogged up and the progress not be there for you? So I'd encourage you, don't procrastinate it. Don't put it off. You got time today, then do it today. But find that time, set aside that time and handle it. Number two. Ask for forgiveness. The first thing you're going to do is that you're going to assess every area of your life. And as God begins to reveal those things to you, then you go before God and you repent of that sin. Uh, repent of it. That, that means three things. 
It means, first of all, that you take responsibility for the sin yourself. You don't blame anybody else. You don't put the spotlight on anybody else. You assume the responsibility for your own sin. Second thing is, is that you turn away from that sin. And you say to God, God, I am no longer going to go in that direction. And with your help, God, I am going to turn to you. So you turn away from the sin and you trust God and you turn uh, to him. Lamentations 3, 40 says, let us turn again in repentance to the Lord. Let us lift our hearts and hands to God in heaven and say, we have sinned and rebelled. Now, what does, uh, when, when you talk about repentance and asking for forgiveness, what, what, what does that mean? It means that, again, and I keep hounding this because it is the typical mode of operation that most of us have, is that you don't rationalize the sin itself and say things like, well, it's just no big deal. That, that's just a small thing. It's just, a, you know, you're sitting there with that piece of paper and you're writing it down. And you think, well, I didn't know that it is a big deal or it wouldn't have come to your mind. You wouldn't have remembered it. I want you to listen to this statement. You ready for this? The greatest barrier to breaking your bondage is you. The greatest barrier to breaking your bondage is you. God wants to heal you. Um, the Bible tells us that if we say that we have no sin, uh, we are deceiving ourselves and, and really the love of God is not uh, in us. So it really means if we go around saying that that's not a big deal, that's not a sin, then we're living a pretensive life. We're just going through the motions. We're faking it and our life is a sham if we think that we don't have sin in our life. So I'll ask you a couple of questions. What are you pretending not to know? What are you pretending that you're not feeling guilty about? What are you pretending that is not a sin? And don't you think that it's finally time to get that stuff out of your life? Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us of our debt. Forgive us of our sin. So you sit and you assess every area of your life, and then you ask for forgiveness of what God's showing you that is a sin in your life. Number three, agree to make wrong things right. Agree to make wrong things right. All right, so you're sitting there in this secluded spot. You've had plenty of time. God's poured through you and he's shown you everything that you could possibly have done and you've written it down and you see the list that is there and certainly somewhere along the way there are going to be some personality issues. There's going to be some relationship issues uh, that are going to come up and so the Holy Spirit of God has revealed that to you so that you must go make those relationships what they ought to be. Somebody that you hate or somebody that hates you, somebody that wronged you, somebody that um, did you in, somebody that mistreated you, maybe you cheated them in some fashion or another. So God's Word says when it is possible, go Make it right. Now, certainly that there are some things that may show up on your paper that would be impossible to make it right. Maybe that person is dead. Maybe it is a divorce issue and the last thing you want to go do is to open up those old wounds and maybe even put in some new ones in the process of trying to make that one right. I understand that there are going to be some, but as much as it is possible, make those things right. Zacchaeus, if you remember, if you go study uh, the scriptures, you find, oh, Zacchaeus, when God got a hold of him, he came running to Jesus. He, he was a tax cheat. <laughs> Certainly nobody is a tax cheat. <laughs> but he was a tax cheat. 
And he ran to Jesus and he says to Jesus, Jesus, if I've taken anything wrongfully from anybody, I'm going to restore that fourfold. I want to make these relationships right. I'm going to handle that. So go make wrong things right. Number four, accept God's forgiveness. Accept God's forgiveness. Assess every area of your life. Ask for forgiveness. When possible, go make the wrong things right. And then get before God and just receive his forgiveness. The word says in Hebrews 4, 16, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne. Listen to this. Go boldly before the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace in help in time of need. Can, 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 I get, can I capture your attention just a minute? When you go before God, lay before God bare, and he shows you what's clogged up your life, and you agree with him about it, and, and he then forgives you, of every one of those sins. When you come before him, he's not going to scold you. He's not going to reject you. The Bible gives us two major words right here in that passage. Go before the throne of grace and mercy. Mercy is God taking care of your past. Grace is God taking care of your future. He's not going to scold you. He's not going to reject you. He's not going to beat you over the head. Now listen, when you go before God, don't go before him begging, please, please, please. Oh, Father, please, please, please. That's not going to cut it. That's not going to work. Because the fact of the matter is, he wants to forgive you a whole lot more than you want to be forgiven. You don't go before God begging. You don't go before God bargaining. God, if you'll just take care of this thing for me, if you'll just forgive me, I promise you I'll never do that again. And God, if you'll just get me out of this mess and clean me up, I promise when I get to church, I'll write my check and I'll go to tithing. That ain't a bad thing to do, but uh, I'm just saying you don't really have to bargain with God. You don't have to plead with God. First John says that if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. All God wants to do is to clean you up and to make you right. If we confess, that, that, that's a wonderful word. It's the word homo legon, H-O-M-O-L-O-G-E-O-N. It's a powerful word. I mispronounced it. It's homo legao is the Greek word. Homo means the same. Logeo means the word. And it means that you're saying the same word about you that God has already known and said about you. So you are agreeing. That's the word confess. You are agreeing with what God says about your life. And he says, if you will just agree with me, God, you are right. That's exactly what I did. That's exactly how I felt. That's exactly the way that it happened. It is on me and I take responsibility for it. You are right. That's confession. Romans 5 says, therefore, since we have been justified through faith, powerful big old church word, Big old theological word. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, it means that God comes along and he cleans you up so radically that it is just as if I'd never sinned. Justified. Just as if I'd never done what I did. God puts me in that position. He cleanses me up. He's going to give you a clean slate. 
Now, I can hear what some of you um, are saying. Pastor, you don't know what I have done. And it really doesn't matter what you've done. But Pastor, you don't understand. Uh, I had uh, an affair. I was unfaithful to my wife. I was unfaithful to my husband. doesn't matter. You, you don't understand, Pastor. Um, I, I had an abortion. Matter of fact, Pastor, I've had more than one. Doesn't matter. Well, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I have same sex attraction. Doesn't matter. Pastor, I'm hooked on pornography. Doesn't matter. Don't you think that God can forgive an affair? Don't you think that God can forgive? And abortion, don't you think that God can forgive sexual sins? My Bible tells me though my sins be as scarlet, though they be red like crimson, God says I will make them as white as wool and as pure as the snuff. Pretty good. Say, Pastor, you, you just, you live in a, y'all, do y'all really think that I live in heaven six days a week and, and, and that God just kind of parachutes me down here on Sunday mornings just to preach? Really? I, I feel the same pressure as, as, as anybody else. Um, I, I handle it not because I'm perfect. God knows better. But I do my best to keep a clean heart before God. You know the last thing that I do right there before I walk up here? I do a major investigation of my heart and I deal with whatever God's Holy Spirit lays on my heart right there before I ever walk up here. Um, let, let me give you number five. I'm going to have to hurry. By the way, number five is probably the most difficult uh, of all of them. Acknowledge your faults to another. Acknowledge your faults to another. Now, I'm not talking about 15 different people. I'm not talking about 10 different people. I'm not talking about five different people. But you ought to have one person in your life that you could go talk to and confess your faults to that person. Let, let me ask you a question. How many of you sitting out here today and how many of you watching this broadcast, how many of you go before God and you confess your sin before God, but you still walk around feeling guilty for that sin? Hmm? The reason is, is you haven't carried out step number five. I want you to listen to the word in James 5, 16. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So you leave out that step and the healing never comes. The guilt is always going to be there. God knows that uh, if we don't do this, then we're going to walk around in pretense all of our lives. And, and we still got that same old fear. If I tell them what I have done, if I confess this before them, they're not going to love me. They're not going to like me. They're not going to respect me. And so we walk around with fakey, pretensive lives in front of other people for fear of what they may think about us. And we live a bunch of fakes acting like we're right when we're really not. Now, let me give you some help in deciding who it is that you really want to... Um, and by the way, can I just say to you, I'm not, I'm not preaching something that I don't practice. Okay? I'm not preaching something. That I, I, I do have that person in, in my life. The first thing you want to do is make sure you pick out a spiritually mature person 
that you know is going to be confident, that you know is not going to be shocked uh, at what you tell them, and uh, they're not going to judge you. And, and can I say this? I believe this with all of my heart. There are plenty of people like that in this church that you could choose from. Uh, one more thing I, I really need to say before we close the service. Uh, make sure they're the same sex. Men ought not to be confessing stuff like that to the, to, to the opposite sex. And women ought not to be confessing that kind of stuff uh, to the opposite sex. Uh, make sure it's a uh, firm, Christian, mature person of the same sex uh, that you talk to. And, and one of the opening remarks uh, that you would go to that person, hey, hey, listen, I, I'm, I need to talk to you. I need to tell you some things. I need to share my heart with you. I don't need fixing. I'm not broken. Uh, I don't need your forgiveness. God has already forgiven me of it. I just need to obey what God's word has taught me and I need to reveal to you what has happened. I'm not asking you to fix me. Only God can do that. Y'all with me? Make this statement, then I'm going to go on. The secret that you believe that you have to hold on to to conceal so dramatically is the very secret that you need to confess. All right, number six, and I'll close. Always repeat steps one through five. It's not a one-step operation. You have to do this over, I can't tell you the numbers of times. Over and over and over again. Here's the deal. Uh, thank God I got to see my grandkids this week. Um, I am a grandfather. And uh, I can tell you from experience that you really never want to procrastinate changing a diaper. It's all going to come out in the end anyway. <laughs> and the longer you put it off, the messier it gets and the more it stinks. <laughs> Never put off cleaning up a mess. Take a bath every now and again. Nobody wants to smell your armpits. Take a bath. Take the garbage out of your... Have y'all ever been gone away for a few days and come back in and the first thing you noticed when you uh, walked in your house, oh my, I forgot to take the trash out. It'll smell your whole house up. Amen? The same thing is true spiritually. Your whole house, your whole life will stink. Take a bath. The Holy Spirit dealing with some of you right now before you ever leave the building. You need to deal with whatever it is God's speaking to you about before you leave. Don't put it off. Deal with it today. Others of you, go home with that piece of paper and that pencil. Get along with God. Assess every area of your life. Agree with God about what he says about your life and receive his forgiveness. Make as much stuff right as you possibly can. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. How many of you could honestly, genuinely, sincerely say, Pastor, man, I'm, I'm cleaned up, washed up. I, I've got a clean slate and I'm moving forward with God today. Or how many of you would have to say, you know what? I haven't felt like that in a long time. I haven't felt like that in a long time. Get before God today. Are you serious about him blessing your life? Are you serious about letting him use you to bless somebody else? Let's stand together, would you? Altars are open right now. You don't need to wait till Matthew comes. Just 
find your way here to the altar and just seek the Lord, pour your heart out to God, agree with God about what he's telling you. Some of you need to give your life to Jesus. You know that he does not live his life in you, so I invite you to come. Others of you need to join this church, a membership somewhere else. The Spirit of God is saying to you, come on down here. Let First Baptist be your home. I invite you to come. Altars are open for you just to come and to pray. Father, please, please have your will and your way done in this service. In each of our lives, I pray that not one person would leave, not one person would vacate this room without a clean and a pure heart. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fbcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.